All right, guys, uh, this part of the video is actually going to be more so for the client because you can't see the pet urine for the most part, except for this one here without a black light. So we got more here and everywhere where there's a little bit of higher blue tint. As you can see, it's showing up almost throughout. Oh, we got one right there and here. So she requests this video because she's evicting somebody uh, due to, I guess, negligence as far as taking the pet out, just letting it pee all over the carpet, which you can see all this blue hue around these spots and in here it's a little more difficult to see on the camera but there are some stains you can see more of these lines of area where the pet has marked against probably some piece of furniture that was there like here you can see there's a piece of furniture here but there's also a bunch of pee so, and then up against the door. So there you go, the dog was probably scratching at the door or something. Let's see if there's, oh, this door looks like it might've gotten painted recently or something. It looks kind of fresh. Anyways, you can see it at the door line here. And then of course up against here, and then there's some in front of whatever this piece of furniture was that was sitting there. And then it's made its way out here few times more than a few times that one's pretty pretty new and then she said that she has cleaned some of it herself too so this blue area here there's a pet urine spot in here but um, she had worked on it and I told her that some soap residue left behind can cause this blue that's why it looks like a perfect um, kind of straight line here up into this she was extracting it there's just a little bit of soap residue left behind um, that's what's causing that blue section to light up but otherwise she said the dog got in here and had marked so right here this is an obvious spot because it's got a discoloration to it and over here so there's a handful of them in the master bedroom closet and then couple of them that got in to this section so right there a couple in here or more than a couple not doing the stairway otherwise we got spots here and there I'm getting ready to vacuum the carpet to get the dry soil out not doing this room here so just these two upper rooms and hallway and then downstairs there's a living room and family room area that I will be doing so just wanted to show you guys this and then if she requests this video I can refer her to it um, so she can you know use it as proof of whatever she needs to do with it um, but I just told her I'd take a couple before and after pictures and decided to do some video too because that'll definitely prove you know that the dog had been marking and everything and that they I guess you know from what I was told so this is just from what I was told that the dog was not getting taken out which I mean you can see clearly that that had been some cases here because there's obvious pet urine in the carpet that I will be treating prior to cleaning and then uh, extracting that out and cleaning the carpet to help neutralize all the spots so depending on how long they have been in the carpet i will determine whether they've made their way down into the pad which usually doesn't take too long so it is really always good to address it right away get it soaked up as much as possible that way it doesn't make its way into the padding and become a issue beneath the carpet because you know, obviously we can clean the carpet and get the carpet nice and clean but if there's enough that's made its way into the pad there's always a chance that over time it will make its way um, 
back to the carpet um, just by walking over it because it's like a sponge so um, you step on a sponge that's full of moisture it's gonna flush some of it out um, so when you got a sponge underneath your carpeting the carpet's absorbent um, you step on those areas there's always a potential chance that um, you're gonna release some of it from the pad and um, it might make its way into the carpet again so uh, when it's heavily heavily um, hit with pet urine or any other any other liquid um, you know obviously check it right away if you didn't know about it nobody told you probably more so this situation then you know what I'm gonna do is heavily extract clean pull everything out neutralize it as much as I you can and then um, once that's all said and done I've had a lot of success rate of it not coming back and it's just because of the cleaning agents I use and the um, time I spend on extracting it so there's a good chance that it won't come back but um, there's always that slight chance and that's why when I pre-qualify jobs before I start them I mention also to clients that it um, you know there's a chance that it may pop back up and the best way to deal with that is to pull the carpet back and replace that section of the pad. I've done that personally in my house. I had a cat that peed in the, on the carpet and uh, it was underneath my kid's crib and didn't know about it. My wife started to smell it and so I pulled the carpet back and replaced it with some moisture barrier padding um, and that resolved the issue after I, I cleaned it. So if you're watching this and you're wondering why some stains come back or um, due to moisture that's generally the, the reasoning behind it. I just wanted to show you guys the empty canister that I just picked up some stuff. Let's see what all we can get, even though this is a tightly woven carpet. I'm going to go over to the mainly affected bedroom first. I'm going to get this portion of the hall. I want to say a big thank you to this client. Um, she had gotten an estimate from a big game company in my area. I won't say who they are, just I don't want to do that. But um, I just yeah, want to shout out a thank you for supporting a, a family owned local area business. It means a lot. Items in here that need to probably just be picked up. That there. Set them on the table over here and then up them going back into the main areas.
see. We got some paint stains. I think those have been here quite a while because it's, it's sitting underneath where the bed frame was at. So those are definitely pre-existing for an X amount of time. She mentioned there was a spot that was already here before um, they got the, the place. I'll see what I can do to get those out that they've been trapped underneath this bed for uh, a year plus, she was saying, as far as how long the person was here. Doing mostly traffic areas throughout the whole thing. Everything that needs to be moved has been moved. This little microfiber cushion thing, I actually am going to be cleaning that for her. everything I guess is going to be this here it's got one of those little covers on it which I have no fingernails of course and I don't know what it's, looks like it's a oh that's not charging anything so we're okay here picked up in here. I'm not hearing anything in the vacuum. Still looks like it's not much further up than it was prior to coming out of the room in the hallway. Going back to the pet urine, now everything that I said earlier in the video is just based off what I was told and what I can see with my black light. Whether or not 
they are from her dog or the person's dog um, that was living there. I cannot say. I'm just only saying that because if this gets used for any legal purposes, there's no way for me to know whose dog it was that did it. But when it's smaller spots, commonly it is from the smaller dog breed, unless a larger dog has some piddling that it did. I said I'm only saying this stuff because there is a chance that it might get used for legal purposes and um, I'm not going to take responsibility for anything that I am, I am saying because this is not my deal. I'm just giving her my professional opinion from what I can see and what I've been told. I do hope it helps what needs to get done, but I cannot say for sure whose dog it was because I wasn't here during the incidents. But there are smaller yellow stains in here. And they may be discolored at this point. We don't know how old they are to be exact. You can see them. Alright guys, I'm going to keep this going. Alright guys, so she decided to add a, a mattress on. So the reason why, as you can see um, from what she had mentioned to me, I guess um, she hadn't thought about it while we were doing the walkthrough for the carpet, but I guess the dog had gotten on here, her bed, and, and peed on it. So you can see the obvious spots. This is a queen size mattress. So I am going to treat it and get it all cleaned up. So I just wanted to show you guys that, see what I'm going against. And uh, yeah, it is not very common that I get mattresses. I've done a bunch of them over the years. Cleaning processes on this one's gonna be pretty much the same as if I was cleaning a sofa. Um, just gonna treat it the way it needs to be treated for these stains and clean it all up so just wanted to give you a little little walk through of that all right guys just finished the mattress and as you can see those spots came out now she was only concerned about the top but I mean it was cleaning up so easily I ended up doing the sides and then the uh, box spring side too to help her out. I mean, they weren't dirty per se, but there might have been some light dust and whatnot on them. So I went ahead and, and cleaned the, the sides for her. But as you can see here, this shaped up really, really well. I took a before and after picture. So I will try and include those in here as well so you can see the back and forth difference there but just wanted to show you guys how that turned out the only thing you got to worry about on these is um, so in these little sections here you just got to make sure that the bed doesn't have any loose threads because you can easily pull on them so like right over here there's a small loose one here so you either got to get permission to trim that off or when you're in that area just hold it out of the way close to the where the thread starts and clean that area so that way you don't pull on the thread because obviously with this machine and the vacuum power I could easily pull on it and maybe even make it worse 
So just wanted to show you guys that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it cleaned up nice. So she's gonna be happy with that. And the cool thing is, is she's already got some little little fans sitting right here. So I could easily have air blow across it to help dry it out faster for her. So she's not worrying about the dry time before, you know, obviously bed bedtime tonight. So it'll be nice and dry before she even gets to it. So that's always awesome. That was, that's it for this portion. All right, guys, I wanted to show you this. You see how this little spot is brighter. So if you remember seeing in the video earlier when I was using the black light, those swipe marks where there is a, a cleaner that was used or a, even a machine, um, a lot of residue was left behind. So what you're seeing here is exactly that, is the residue from the cleaner that was left behind and not extracted all the way out has now uh, bleached the color of the carpet a little bit. So now you got that little circular spot that had been worked on looking brighter. So that's why it's so important to extract everything out thoroughly. So if you're using a cleaner carpet cleaning machine that you bought from the store or rented one, whatever the case may be, you always want to make sure that you rinse everything out thoroughly because leftover residue in the carpet can cause problems and uh, especially if you worked on a spot and all you did was tamp it up if you did not extract it uh, with at least a wet uh, shop vac then you're going to have problems like this over a period of time of that soap residue sitting in the carpet for however long it's been and then um, the spot that you worked on is now going to leave an issue like this. So and that can't be cleaned out once once it sets and becomes permanent. If you bleach out the color of the carpet, I mean the color of the carpet's now changed. So I just wanted to go over that with you guys. Uh, if you've scoured the internet before looking for ways to get carpet cleaning thing, uh, carpet st stains out of your carpet. Sorry, excuse me there. Um, there's a couple instructional videos that say the exact same thing as you know if you're gonna use this concoction to get a stain out and there's some of them on there that do a good job but it was always the guy was always repeating make sure you got a shop vac uh, a wet shop vac that you can extract it out with and then um, that way you're not leaving anything behind especially if you're using something with um, soap in it because you're gonna end up with that residue and may eventually bleach the color of the carpet out or when you have your carpets professionally clean it actually foams our system up and we have to go slower and make additional vacuum strokes and then uh, also use a defomer product to obviously bring that down so our system doesn't get all locked up with that foam and it takes a while for it to break down and get our vacuum suction back. So I haven't had that problem too much here. My vacuum is still fairly strong, hasn't degraded anything, but um, it definitely looks like this spot and there's a couple other ones in here that have that issue. You, know, you try a product on a stain that does that um, that product does not work for, and it gets left behind any residue stuff like that. You run the risk of setting the stain in, and even a professional carpet cleaning can't always pop those out depending on what was used. So just wanted to go over that. Hope that information is helpful to any of you contemplating using something. Um, just make sure you got a wet shop vac that you can extract it out. Um, tamping stuff is fine. You know, if you're putting a product on it, it's good to tamp it in so that way you can get the product into the fibers. And then once you're done with that, back it all out. And then sometimes putting a little bit of water to flush it with clean water. And then again, vacuuming it all up. Otherwise, things like this can happen. So hopefully that was helpful. All right, guys. So I'm pre-spraying the downstairs, and uh, it looks like there's a couple discolorations down here. Looks like some things have been set into the carpet, just like upstairs in that area in the closet. So the areas that are soiled here more 
I do add a little extra to those sections. Go a little slower when I get to them, more or less. So I won't be able to show too much of the pre-sprain just because it gets a little difficult to hold this. Uh, pull hoses and, or the line, I should say, and then film at the same time. But I did want to show you guys that when I'm pre-spraying, I'm doing an even coat across the whole carpet and then a little extra in the heavy spots to work on those a little bit more. And so once I clean everything out, um, the areas that have some spots that were set in or bleached out, because I'm getting the dirt off of those and the residual residue, they always look a little brighter because it bleached out the color. So you may see some of that uh, down here as well if I have the time to do some more video about that. So just wanted to show you guys that I am giving it basically an even coat, you know, across the whole thing here. And that's what I'm doing for the pre-spray. I'm making slow movements and some double passes in certain areas. This carpet's kind of in between moderately and heavily soiled. And of course, stains, pet urine stains. Um, a lot of them set in. Well, as far as the discoloration, I say, should say not the urine itself.
So I just wanted to show you guys some of the rinsing. These carpets. Mm, I'd say this is probably the original carpets of the house. It, pretty common these houses over here probably around 15 maybe 20 years old it's cleaning up really well it's just unfortunate that those um, pet spots I got worked on that left some leftover residue and stuff and whatever the product they used uh, pulled color uh, I actually saw the pet treatment product upstairs on a counter and I was reading it and uh, you know with any product really it says to always test it in an inconspicuous area to make sure uh, it's okay to use for you know, test color fastness, which basically means you're checking to see if it's gonna take the color out of the carpet. And if not, then it's generally okay to use so long as you're doing it properly. But I have a feeling that this one that product is the one that caused the discolorations because it's just in the pet urine spots. And some of them, not all of them. It looks like the ones that got treated with that product caused the discoloration to happen. So it does say that if it happens, obviously to disregard the product and not use it on this floor. Now some products are going to work on some carpets and some products are going to, not going to work on others. So there is no cure-all for each one. Just like for me, I have different free sprays for different situations. I have different rinses for different situations. There's no two products that I use that are going to take care of every single thing that I run against. There's something to think about um, when you're using a store-bought product. Some of them may work, and that's great. But if they're not getting rinsed out and it's leaving a residue behind, you're going to be in, in trouble a little bit with dealing with uh, potentially a bleached out spot. So. wanted to go over that since that's what's going on at this house but I mean you can see it's definitely brighter it looks a little nicer and in, in person just because the lighting's not the best here um, but it is cleaning up really well so I'm happy with that I think the client's gonna be very happy with the difference that's being made here um, definitely a brightness to it and it'll probably brighten a little bit more as it dries too and she didn't have me do the, the stairs but this step here and that step there, you can tell I cleaned on it. There was a stain just to the right on that first step of those uh, water jugs. And just because that was gonna bug me staring at that as I'm making my way out the door, it took me 30 seconds or less to clean it. So I decided to clean that up for her. So she'll like that when she comes back and sees I did a couple extra little things. That's the whole point. You know, you're gonna be right there. It's gonna take you 10 to 30 seconds. Might as well clean it because when the client comes home or a client comes and checks everything out and they see that's gone, even though it wasn't on the list to do, I mean, you know they're gonna turn into your cheerleader and refer you whenever possible because you did a great job for them and you went just a little bit over and above in the service, so. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, as long as you can make the time for it and it's not going to hurt you in any way, but something such small as that, 10 to 30 seconds to clean, no biggie, right? So decide to just take care of it. Well guys, I'm going to finish this job up. It is Saturday. I believe this is my eighth or ninth Saturday in a row. I um, accidentally booked myself next weekend. Got two good jobs, so I can't complain. Next weekend is... It's Father's Day here in 2020, so or we, Father's Day weekend, whatever you want to call it. Um, but those are good jobs, so I'm not complaining. Got a commercial job and a residential job before that, and the commercial job's empty, and I just have free reign to that. So it'll be a full long day, but that's all right. Trying to get everybody taken care of in a timely manner. 
So thanks again, guys, so much for watching. I really appreciate you. And for those who prefer uh, videos of just cleaning, they are on the channel. You just got to look for them. Uh, most cases, when I add ASMR into the title or in the uh, the description, means there's at least a section somewhere where there's no talking, just straight cleaning. Or there's some of them where it's just straight cleaning the entire time. Um, I know it might take a minute to, get, to find it, but you know I got over 200 videos. But occasionally I do try and make those videos. Right now, not so much. And you're gonna see more vlogs than anything because I got Adam with me most days, Monday through Thursday right now, and then Preston Fridays and sometimes Saturdays um, working with me. So I'm more focused on making sure they're following my path of how I clean and make sure that we're both doing a great job and delivering great customer service. So I'm more likely to talk in those videos um, during the cleaning because um, you know it's good for him to both of them to hear so if I'm not around and they're taking care of some jobs for me they're able to portray my standards from start to finish so it is like they're getting um, you know the carpets cleaned by me that's the whole goal is to try and get everybody on the same exact page saying the same exact things doing the same exact cleaning and everything. I know that's difficult, but um, it's a goal I have because as long as we're all on the same page doing the same thing, there'll be no miscommunication. We'll be able to deliver you know, the best results possible with great customer service, and we'll be able to maintain our five-star rating that we have um, on Google and through Facebook. So um, it's just important. So if you're into that type of cleaning, you know, you can either look for those videos that I've made in the past or um, look up some other professional carpet cleaning YouTube channels that may be more geared towards just the cleaning. Uh, there is a lot of them out there. I'm not aware of all of them, but the ones that I've seen and watched a little bit of their content are great. I've shouted out a couple of them in the past in some other videos I've done just because I like their content and a couple of them uh, throw in a little bit of humor in there and it's awesome to see them do a fantastic job and have a great sense of humor so uh, I think that's amazing mine's probably more serious um, throughout my videos but um, that's just just what I prefer so anyways if you watch if you listen to all that thank you um, I will see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching please leave me a comment a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and then also if you haven't yet please subscribe we're getting so close to getting that thousand mark. I appreciate you guys so much for that. So you guys, I'll see you then in the next one. Take care.